we're looking at fertility rates that are in the tank. We're looking at, well, divorce rates are down because marriage rates are down <laughs> and um, marriage rates are at their lowest right now. Um, we're, pushing a, we're pushing back uh, the age of first marriage further and further and further. Is there, a, should we save marriage? That's a, maybe that's the question I should be asking. Should we save marriage? Should there be something? Is there any kind of fix to this? Um, I'll go first if you guys okay, want to yeah. let me hop on the soapbox here for a bit because I've, I've put a lot of thought in this. I have an entire chapter in my book on why smart men don't marry today. Um, should okay to answer the question: Should we save it? Save it for what? You know, for who? Is it worth saving? Yeah. Well, not for men. Absolutely not. I mean, there's it's 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 all uh, risk with low with very low reward for men, and it's low risk and higher reward for women. Um, the, the social contract of marriage, like the origins of marriage for a very long time, if you read Stephanie Kuntz's book, um, The History of Marriage, it was about the acquisition of in-laws. And even if there was a breakup in that relationship a few hundred years ago, and she brought a few acres of land to the table and I don't know, a couple of cows or something like that, um, he would usually keep the kids and all the assets that were acquired during the, you know, merging of the families. And she would often go and live with her family or in some cases have to go and work in a brothel. Um, but that's changed completely. Um, that entire scenario has been flipped upside down and then smashed into the ground with a big sledgehammer. Uh, it's been beaten dead. There's, there's really very few advantages to marriage, um, you know, for men today. And then you, mix into that equation. So if you take a blender and you take that ingredient, and you throw that into the blender and then you take, yeah. well, most men today are weaker betas. They don't know how to hold frame in a relationship. Mm -hmm. They're not red pill aware. Uh, almost all guys will go through the process of betatization through a thousand concessions. Let's throw in that ingredient. Um, if she decides to pull the plug from underneath you in a marriage and wants to get a divorce, the state will make sure that she's well looked after and there's a transfer of your resources. You probably won't see your kids as much as you used to. Some other guy that she starts porking will see your kids a lot more than you do, throw that in the blender. And then you turn on the blender and you blend it up and you have yourself a nice big shit shake. There's really nothing in there to try to save. Um, if, if society wants to save marriage, th this is what needs to happen, I'll say it again. Women need to take off the pink pussy hats. They need to all get together and say, you know what? We want to get married. We like the idea of marriage, um, religious, you know, whatever, insert reason here. But it's too hostile towards men and they're not marrying us. So we want the state to change those laws to make them more balanced. Not even fair, but like more balanced. Mm -hmm. But I don't see that happening. Like why would women want to give up the advantage that they have when there's so many gullible men lining up to wife up all of these women today. Right. Mm. So, you know, to answer the question of, is it worth saving? I mean, if you've got a functioning brain in your head and you've watched any of my content for a little bit, it's hard to conclude that it's worth saving. Mm. Aaron, do you, why aren't you married, Aaron? Oh, my old man's been <laughs> divorced 18, 19, 20. I don't know. And then see my friends get divorced. I don't know. Do you want, do you want to go dance on landmines? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, I'll tell you why uh, legally that is a hard no that the legal risk facing men and maybe even women sometimes is it's not worth the government's way too involved. No. So that's, that's a deal breaker off that. And I even wrote these down and there, let me count the ways I'll just give you the main ones Two, men can't afford it. Young men can't afford it in part because we've regulated the heck out of the economy. We tax their ever living snot out of productive men. I mean, all women want a guy that makes six figs. Well, you know, men would have the same purchasing power if they weren't forking over 45% of their income at 67,000 a year. So uh, young 53 men- 53% here, my friend. Well, well that's because you're in, you have that nice long haired trust fund baby as a president. Um, <laughs> <laughs> women don't want to, as per our previous conversations, they have reprioritized career and, and, and things above that. Um, and I'll, I'll be perfectly blunt on us. Most women are not, I hate to use the word trained, but prepared or conditioned or educated about what it's like to be a quality wife. They all want to get married. They all want to have kids. But the heck, if any of them want to be a wife or a mother, I mean, it's, oh, Kid came off the assembly line, ship it to daycare. Mama got to go work. 
And he better this, he better that. It's like, hey, selflessness, altruism. I love you more than you love me. I give him advice. That that is, I've said it many times before. At best, young women have been conditioned to be adversarial. I'm sorry, competitive against men, and at worst, adversarial. There are very read it. <laughs> I did it. Pull it out of my ass. There are very few marriageable women. There are very few young women today who are even capable of a serious and mature relationship such as marriage. Uh, so there's that. And then as to whether marriage is worth saving, right? No, not its current condition. It's not marriage. This is a, this is a very convoluted tax. This is a very convoluted wealth transfer scheme. Um, it, it, and we haven't even talked about how horrific it is for children. Uh, but it will, it will inevitably form. It formed naturally throughout human history, uh, but it's just going to take a genuine economic collapse. It's going to take an elimination of, of law. Like, a, a, like it's going to have to happen that bad. This women are going to sit down and say, okay, okay, well, all right, we've gone. No, it's not going to happen. It's going to be like, where's the water? Holy crap. Where's, the, where's the electricity? And then we're going to go back to reset. We're going to go through everything humanity had to learn going all the way back to the Mesopotamians say, Hey, you know what? We should come up with an agreement, a social contract, and we're going to reformulate the exact same rules that we did before. Uh, and maybe we'll do it all again in the year 4,500 AD, but it, it will, if the human race wish, wishes to continue and grow economically beyond, beyond a, a subsistence farming type of existence, it will return, but we are going to have to have this entire system collapse. People are going to have to have their nose put into reality as to what it takes to survive and support a family uh, without the assistance of government. Um, until that happens, it, no, there is no reason men should get married. There's no reason women should get married. And there's no reason to salvage this Frankenstein version of, of marriage that we have today. Hmm. George, what do you think about this? Yeah. I like the reason I'm at one, of, before you answer, let me just give you a little food for thought here. When I was watching your whiteboard thing about, you know, the housing market and forming families and, and the idea of like these families who would have to be, would be predicated, let's just say, on a conventional form of marriage is affecting the housing market or affecting people's like certainly their buying power and everything else. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is it worthwhile for us to even like consider like trying to find some way to sort of sell like salvage marriage maybe not maybe save is not the word <laughs> like maybe reimagine <laughs> reimagine it or 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 put it into a different context would that be of value from an economic perspective well you know i don't know how, even if it was i don't know how you'd execute you know because then it goes back to central planning and we definitely don't want any more central planning than we already have especially in the United States and, and, and Canada, you know, how, how do you make that a loss? It's got to be a bottoms up. It's got to be something that men and women uh, both understand and, and want to pursue. Uh, if it's not marriage, even if it's just a long-term relationship where two parties are committed to each other and want to start and raise and grow a family, you know, whatever you want to call that. Uh, but the, it, it needs to, there needs to be awareness on both sides uh, as to what the issue is and then come to some sort of common ground by changing the law or the incentive structure in order for us to, you know, not just have marriage into the future, but have, have uh, a growing society from a standpoint of population and that that's healthy. So um, it's just, it's, it's getting from A to B is, is difficult because of the narratives right now that are being pushed so heavily uh, in society and because we as human beings struggle when it comes to doing a cost benefit analysis on uh, things like, you know, let's use an, as an example, a gal that wants to become a professional and climb the corporate ladder. Fantastic. That, that, that's, that's great. I'm all for it. But they need to understand the, the, the cost of doing that. And so few uh, of them do because society will say, oh, well, you can have it all. You can have everything. Well, actually, you really can't have everything. Uh, guys can't have everything. Women can't have everything. So you have to make choices. You have to understand that if you pursue this career, uh, you might not be able to have as many kids. And it just 
it is what it is, you know, but you have to be conscious that you're making those decisions. And I think, uh, you know, either neither party is really conscious of, of what's going on. But one thing I, I wanted to uh, say, you know, Aaron was talking about uh, or alluding to now we need two um, income families. And I think that's a, a big part of this. You know, uh, if we didn't need two income families, uh, this uh, family unit, I think, would be much more uh, easy to maintain. And also, too, you know, if you look at Jordan Peterson's work, which I'm sure you guys, I know you guys have, because I heard you talk about it, on Sweden, as an example, when you get societies that are the most egalitarian, you find that left to their own devices, women usually uh, take on roles that you would assume historically that they would take on and pursue things that they historically have been interested in and same thing with guys. So if we can just get out of the way and leave people to their own devices, then I think that there's a, a brighter future. But going back to the, the two income family, 